Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so if you caught up with my Instagram, you'll probably know the big event that happened on Tuesday last week, and um, it's the Ikebok official book lunch in China. It's in Beijing and Shanghai and Shenzhen, and it's really fun. So I'm just going to talk about the whole story of how I fortunately got to draw artworks with the Ichabog and also um, my experiences of drawing the Ichabog and some fun footages from the actual premiere, which is awesome. You might or might not have watched my Ichabog illustrations video. So it's just basically a video about me and um, going through all of my Ichabog illustrations, which is actually up there in the, on the walls right there. And that video quality is not that good, so I want to film another one. Um, let me just talk you through the whole story right now of how I got myself involved and is really luckily one of the illustrators with illustrations that I got into the actual book. So it all started in June, I think June 3rd this year when I was in campus in my school and that particular day, one of my very good friends called Renee, she told me about the Ichabog first. So of course, big shout out to Renee. And so she just rushed to me in school and said, Jill, there's this great thing. J.K. Rowling's releasing a new book. And I'm like, what? what? What's it about? When, when will she release it? And she showed me this awesome Ichabog page where I can read the book. And I found out that there's actually an illustration competition. And by that time, my heart is like beating like um, 700 times per minute. And I was like, <gasps> illustration competition. So I was super excited and I clicked it. But... I realized it's only open for certain countries and China is not one of them and I live in China so unfortunately I can't join the competition. Um, I did find a way, my family, my dad actually helped me find a way that I can let J.K. Rowling um, and other people see my illustrations because, well, I mean it's J.K. Rowling's book and I'm like a huge J.K. Rowling fan so of course I'm going to draw the illustrations even though I can't officially enter them. U.S. and U.K. and all other countries competition so I just drew these artworks and my dad put it on his Twitter page and showed so that people can see it and um, I think the whole timeline of me drawing those illustrations was from June to August I think. Surprisingly J.K. Rowling commented on two of my artworks so oh gosh. He commented on this one and this one this one yeah. And that night, um, I remember my mom was calling me and she just uh, told me that J.K. Rowling commented on my artwork and I was like rushing towards her and she showed me the comment and I was like... <gasps> and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I my jaw is officially on the floor. Oh, it's such a big moment for her to comment on my artwork. But by that time, I just thought, okay, she commented on what two of my artworks. One day in August, my dad saw a comment from a very, very friendly um, New York girl, and she told me on one of my artwork comments that there is a separate illustration competition for China, and it's open to all Chinese children and all the other world's children as well. And there's actually an illustration competition that can be open for me and I was like so excited so by that time I already finished all of the drawings and my mom just sent the um, publish workshop it's called Ren Min Wen Xue Chu Wan Shu I don't know how to say it in English so they're also publishing a Chinese version of the, of the book and they're looking for Chinese little children to illustrate it 
And so I sent all of my illustrations, I think it was 20, I sent all of my 20 illustrations to that workshop. Surprisingly, one of my artworks was actually chosen to be printed in this final book. And I remember it clearly that afternoon when my dad picked me from school and my mom just sent this mass message on my phone saying that my artworks got officially chosen and I was like I was so excited like this will be like I've been literally drawing for 12 years and this is the first time that one of my works actually got published in a book and not just any book it's Jake Romy's book I mean come on man this is and actually, I'll show you this work right now. A lot of great illustrations in this book as well, so you should really check it out, the Chinese version. This is my illustration. This is the artwork that is chosen. It's actually that one over there. Can you see it? That one over there. And so it's this one. And so this one is Mrs. Beamish hiding behind the curtains. I think it was that title. It's called Mrs. Beamish hiding behind the curtains and yeah and here's briefly what the Ichabod is about since of course I read it and I really loved it and so it's about um this um country called Cornucopia and it's a very wealthy country and the country's king is called King Fred which the illustrations up there he has um two Two of his um, friends, or actually a um, worker, is Lord Spitalworth and Lord Flippoon. So it's these two men right there. So, and they give advices to the king. And so one day there is this shepherd that um, ran to the palace to King Fred and said that there's this monster called the Ichabog that ate his dog or sheep. Um, the king Fred was like, oh, really? Because the Ichabog was once the country's legend. It was just a story that tell kid's story but nobody really believed it so they went to a place called the marshlands where there are marshes deadly marshes and so he and lord spittleworth and lord flapoon and also mr beamish went to um look for the ichabog and while they were looking for the ichabog king fred thought that he saw the ichabog it was a huge shadow but he couldn't be sure and it was very chaos there so um lord flapoon accidentally shot mr beamish dead the Lord Spittleworth was like, how to pull this off? He, they didn't really find the Ichabog, but how to satisfy the shepherd and how to say this whole thing about how Mr. Beamish died. So they lied to the villagers. They said that the Ichabog killed Mr. Beamish. So, of course, when you lie, you have to keep lying so that people will believe you. So Spittleworth is actually one of the villains of the story. So Spittleworth um, said a lot of other plans, like the foot and also other stuff, to, and the statue of Noe Buttons as well, to... Um, let make people believe that the Ichabod actually exists. So um, his plan went really well, but not until four little children um, went to the went to find actually find the Ichabod because um, Bird's father was obviously killed and Daisy's father was working for Miss Lord Spittleworth. So they're really poor kids and they want to help their family. So they went to look for the Ichabod and they actually found the Ichabod. And the Ichabod is actually a really green, cute little monster. The four sons, little children, went to the cornucopia to prove to the people that the Ichabod is actually harmless. And when the people actually believed them and Spittleworth was like, he didn't end up great. And also, like, at, at the end of the story, everything went back to normal. Everything was nice. J.K. Rowley actually signed on this book. I can actually get my favorite writer in the world's autograph. Isn't that amazing? Now I'll show you the clip from the Ichabod premiere.
来，十、九、八、七、六、五、四、三、二、一，好的，哇！全球首发这个轮云的一卡。感谢几位嘉宾的见证和发布，谢谢你们，谢谢。好的，谢谢大家。那我们也，来，我们把口罩摘下来，好不好？把口罩摘下来，让，来，我们把，介绍一下你的这幅画。